Hello and welcome to the video. Recently I did a video talking about simple ESC calibration. For those of you that are new to the hobby and didn't understand what ESC calibration was or why you needed it. However, I was up at 3DXR with Ben and I was talking about the fact that I made this video and he then started to get into a lot more detail about the specific little wrinkles that you can sometimes get into when you do ESC calibration with things like the Pixhawk Cube and RD Pilot controlled flight controllers. So as I was there, I said, this is absolutely brilliant. This is gold. Let's turn the cameras on, fire up a mic and make a quick video. So that is what this is. Do check some of the links down below to other the Ardu Pilot stuff here. Things like the Big Boys Toys playlist on the channel for lots more tips and tricks about this stuff. But let me shut up, hand over to Ben, and he can go through some of the tips and tricks if you're struggling to calibrate your ESCs in Ardu Pilot or you have that situation that when you fire the model up, it just sits there with the motors beeping. Okay, so this is a short video on ESC calibration. It's a question that comes up every now and again, and sometimes people just get a little bit confused with where to go and where to start. So let's have a look at the way I calibrate ESCs and let's have a look at why we do it this way. So traditionally, before we used flight controllers and you were just doing a traditional uh, remote control plane, you would simply use the throttle based calibration from the transmitter. So let's have a little look at that scenario. We have our motor, we've got our ESC, this is just a hobby wing ESC. And what these ESCs want to see to do the calibration is the throttle high on startup. So the first time you connect to it, you need to have the throttle in the high position and then you would lower it once you hear the correct beeps depending on your um, ESC. So in this case, it's normally a double beep. Then you lower it, it records the low setting, and it's it's essentially ready to use. And what we're getting on um, this output, it's a, a PWM, a pulse width modulation. And what confuses people is sometimes that different devices output different sort of numbers. So I know, for example, this uh, FreeSky Tyrannus here, uh, the low value is 982 by default, and the high value is 2006. Um, so when we raise the stick, that is the value that's been output on the channel. So it will record that number as the high input. You raise the throttle stick down. So let's have a look here. So we'd raise it up to the top and that's going to be um, a value of 2006. We'll lower it down and it's 982 in this case. Quite a wide range there and in some cases it might actually be out of range for some products. So that's assuming you haven't done any um, sort of output scaling. That is what the speed controller would see. So the traditional method for, for throttle calibration, um, when you're using it without any additional um, equipment, um, is simply to, to raise the throttle high from the transmitter. So where we start to see problems is where people come to build um, some sort of drone, here's an example. So something with the flight controller on, and they, they hit sort of calibration issues, they hit things like the ESC is just beeping and you know what's going on or badly calibrated ESCs where they slightly vary but work will result in you know horrendous flight performance. So the difference to note here is when we bring a flight controller in is that they're expecting certain values or to be within a certain range. So quite often the, the transmitter value is sort of no good. So my method for ESC calibrations where it needs to be done is to use something like this digital servo tester. And for my use with multi-rotors, fixed wings, VTOLs, I always like to choose the values that have been calibrated at. So in this case, there's a low value of 1100 and a high value of 1900. Um, that's what I'm doing today. Um, there's no reason why that couldn't be 1000 and 2000, which is very popular on pre-programmed ESCs. But for this demonstration, I have simply set my output to go from 1100 to 1900. So that's my output. And when I turn this pot on the side, sort of low at a minute and we're high so let's have a look at let's calibrate this so we've said this is set from 900 to 1000 let's let's see what it actually means so i'm just going to connect up the servo here and we're in the low position so i know we're opening 900 and if i as i start to turn it to high so all the way on high that's hit the the 1900 high mark so this is easy to see in a servo movement and this is kind of what your throttle is doing. So going from low to high. Now, when people see an issue is if they've calibrated it with a very different range. 
So from the transmitter, what they'll actually see is a slightly greater movement, you know, maybe just five or ten percent. But what that can do is if it's not calibrated to what the flight controller is expecting, they could simply not start. You'll get the beeping tone, which will show you um, the effect of badly calibrated. So back to our speed controller, and what we want to do is we'll connect up our signal and we'll have it on high. So this is outputting PWM value of um, 1900 and we're going to connect our battery to 6S1 and what we should see is a double beep. There we go and then we must now input low and we've had a single beep in this case that is confirmation. This is just a bench motor so I think it's a little bit grindy but there we go. And what we're getting is we're getting shortly after turning we'll get this sort of start we've got a good range up to full throttle and it stops so this speed controller has now been calibrated to a low value of 1100 and a high value of 19. to give you an example of what could happen if you um, are somehow out of range if you've not performed a calibration so you tried to do it on a transmitter but you're left in half throttle so if a speed controller receives an out of range signal so let's try and start it there with a sort of a higher throttle value. As soon as we connect power, we should start to get some sort of warning. Now this will vary from ESC to ESC. Sometimes it's a slower pitch, but it's basically telling us this signal's out of range. Um, so if you power up your model and your calibration's wrong and you're trying to arm and you've got some sort of beeping or maybe one out of the four motors is beeping, yeah, it's, it's an indication that there's something wrong in your sort of ESC setup. So that is how I perform um, calibration. And the next step to show is how we do this on the flight controller. I'm just going to show you one more thing where people also get stuck at, and that is with ESCs that have got hard set values. So we see this, for example, in the T-Motor Alpha range. Now, these are a really good ESC, very efficient, and they work on a, um, they're sort of perfectly matched to a range of motors because they have a, a firmware that matches each motor that they, they work with. Now you can't perform this type of calibration with, with this ESC, it will not do anything at all. What these have is these have a hard set PWM value and depending on the model this could be 11, 000, 1120 to 1940, that's quite common within the range. The other type of CS, ESC will be something like your BL Heli or your Blue J where you can actually type in the value, what to do for high and low. Um, so for example, the default I believe is um, 1000 to 2000 on those sort of ESCs, but you can change it within certain parameters and certain ranges. What's important to understand is though, once, once we know how we've calibrated the CSC, what numbers are in there, where we'll put them into um, the flight controllers, so in this case an autopilot, where, where these numbers become relevant to give you the best experience. So we'll now jump over to the laptop and this quadcopter and we'll have a look where we see these values and where a mistake could be made. And if you are hearing beeping or you, you think you're not getting the full resolution of the throttle, let's have a look how we can troubleshoot that. Okay, so now over to the laptop. Uh, what we've done here is we've connected to uh, the, the quadcopter here and mission planner. Um, let's first have a little look at these numbers I was talking about on the radio. So if we go to the radio calibration page, we're going to see um, what's actually been outputted from the transmitter. So again, it's a Horus uh, X18 here, FreeSky. So if I go to full throttle here, the highest it gets to is about 2006. And the lowest we're hitting, it will actually go to 982. So that is the default sort of output on a, um, the radio once that's been calibrated and with no adjustment to like the range of movement. So that's the values we'll hit. However, if we go to the servo output and we look at what's going to be outputted to the motors, which are plugged into outputs of one to four. Um, so at the moment they're sitting at 1100 and the max is 1900. So this is defined in here. There's also another parameter to what is the maximum that can be outputted to our motors, uh, which is MOT, PWM min and max. So let's have a little look for that. Um, here we go. So because this is on my stock settings, I clamp down the minimum and maximum output that can be given um, to the ESC to this 1100 to 1900. So if you were going to use sort of hard set values from either an alpha ESC or from, um, you know, a, a 
uh, BL Heli, Blue J ESC, where you have the wider range of say a thousand or two thousand, then obviously the settings must match here as well. Um, and you must, you know, it, it needs to be calibrated to those values. I'm going to show you one more method of calibrating the ESCs, um, and this is where the flight controller is going to do it. And it's going to do it by when we restart, it will pass through the high throttle value, in this case 1900, and it will then do the low value, and it will essentially perform the calibration we did with our servo tester. This is normally very good, but occasionally there can be some issues so some ESCs that have various programming options it is possible that you can sometimes go beyond the throttle calibration and hit a different um, setting such as timing or um, direction so just bear that in mind so in this case we, we did a little test it does work so I'm going to show you how to do that so we need to enable a parameter it's going to be active the next reboot and then it will disable itself so we need the ESC and its calibration. So here we go, I've just searched for ESC in the full parameters list, ESC underscore calibration. So by default it's on zero and it'll go back to zero, but we're gonna use number two. So start up in ESC calibration mode regardless of the throttle uh, position. So let's change that to two. Let's tab out of the box and let's click write parameters. That is now on there, but in order for it to perform this procedure, we need to do a reboot. So I'm gonna disconnect our laptop remove our USB and also um, we're now going to power cycle so I'm going to unplug the battery and then I'm going to plug it back in. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. So what will happen here we'll get a slightly different startup tones and lights. So there we go what we've had here is it's essentially carried out the calibration now note what we've done here we've removed the props you should always remove the props while um, doing any form of calibration um, and in this case um, these motors are essentially live but I've actually done this with a self-centering throttle so if I do load the throttle and move it we will have action so just bear in mind this is an example of why we remove the propellers so taking it down to zero is now the, we are now armed essentially so just to show you so this is why you would take the propellers off. It would have been very easy for somebody to, you know, move the throttle stick and not realize. Um, so that, that is always remove the propellers. So we must now disconnect the battery with my assistant. And there we go. So let's, um, let's verify now that we have done this successfully and we're within range. So we're going to sort of fully connect up again. So I'm going to put the USB in and um, Lee's going to power up the Telemetry drone. Telemetry recovered. So... This one has a few second boot delay, so it will take a little bit longer. We've got the ESCs beeping now, so this is this is the normal. They're not yet getting a signal because the flight control hasn't booted. And then once we do boot, now we've got the tone, so that's good. So that has basically said it's receiving, it's a signal in range, so we've got no noise. If you had performed this and you were getting um, a persistent beep, could be fast or slow, it normally thinks that it is not getting the correct signal. Um, so that would be a sign of incorrect or failed calibration by either method. So let's connect our laptop again via USB. So connecting to the COM port. Let's have a look at um, the motor test page now. And let's have a look at what a good sign is that we've got a nice calibration. So, um, so optional hardware. Motor test, sorry. Now this is a quadcopter, so it's showing what motors A, B, C and D. Um, we're upside down at the minute, so this is the front right, which is always A, and we'll go around the clock. By default, this is set for 5% throttle for two seconds. These will probably just start at 5, um, quite often I turn it up. So first of all, let's just go to 10%, and let's just make sure it all works. So, yep. Yep. So speed it up. Okay, so they're all turning, moving. Um, let's just drop it down. Um, so what, what I want to see here is that they all start within about 1%. So, yep, yep. Now let's have a look. So that one there with C and D, they took 6%. So what we're seeing here is that A and B started with 5, the other ones were 6. Now, this is just a sort of um, a loose value. They're, they're within 1% of each other. Um, if you did this test again, they might all start on 5. It's, it's, it's 
that's nothing to worry about. What would be an issue here if you have a problem um, with, you know, uncalibrated motors, uh, ESC, sorry, you've replaced something. If you found that three of the motors start on 5% and the other one starts on 16 this thing is not going to fly very nicely. <laughs> when you go to arm the drone, if they don't all spin equally and, and start at the same time, you know, this is likely an issue with ESC calibration. And it will just result in really poor flight performance. Um, it will not be able to sort of level and cope as well. Some motors will have less resolution as it's trying to control them because you you need a more throttle to start and you, 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 you reach full throttle earlier. So it's really important that you get um, calibration done well. Some ESCs will naturally all start a bit higher, like they, even though you've calibrated it to a 1100, 1900, it might be that you need 10% anyway before they start to work. That is just the way some ESCs will work. They'll want to see a bit more of an input. You could imagine I've got a little bit of dead band at the beginning or something. Um, so other parameters that coincide with this is um, the spin when armed and spin minimum. So let's just highlight these here. We're seeing those values we hard set in the parameters list, the 1100 and 1900, but underneath this, spin when armed. So when we arm this drone and it's got low throttle, it's gonna be at 0.1 or 10%. Now, this is a value you might have to adjust if, for example, your motors don't actually start till 10% anyway, because it would be too close. But in this case, we've seen they all start at five or 6%. So the spin when armed is absolutely fine. If they all started at eight, nine, 10%, you would need to increase that maybe to 0.12 or 0.15. Um, spin minimum is once you've armed it and you go to take off, then it will never go below this in the air, so it'll never go below 0.15. And then what you'll notice here, by default, they'll only ever go up to 95%, so the, the, the drone will not demand 100% from a motor anyway. And it is quite often that if you were to sort of analyze the output, you would probably see that the last 5% was unusable anyway. Um, that would just be a feature of most ESCs. Once you once you're up to that top five percent, it is it is maxed out already. So this is taken into consideration here. A common sort of situation one might see is a person goes to replace um, an arm, the the motor and the ESCs, and they hook it all back up, and then it just beeps. Um, so first of all, normally this means you know there probably hasn't been any calibration performed. So that beeping is that the state that ESC is in or how it's come from the shop, whatever, um, it, it's expecting to be calibrated. So you would have powered it on like this and this motor would be beeping and ticking um, and that would be a case that it needs to be calibrated. Now my procedure for that would essentially be to calibrate them all again, just so you know that you're on the right, um, the right to the page um, and then verify them again with the motor test and make sure that they are starting within the same range. This is also another reason why you don't want to like mix and match components. Um, you know, we have four identical motors for a reason. Um, if you also replaced an ESC and you've got a 20 amp hobby wing and you've got a 20 amp special, um, it, it is likely they will behave differently. The, the way they sort of linearize the throttle can be different. The sort of delay on startup. And in general, it will affect the flight performance. You will not get a good experience from doing that. Um, but if obviously you've just had an issue, you replaced it like for like, do the calibration again and use these steps to verify that they start at the same time when you've got a full range of control. So hopefully that's been useful for those of you that are already pilot pilots who are relatively new to the whole thing, that you're setting something up and the ESCs aren't calibrating or they're not behaving normally or when you fire the model up, they're making just that beeping noise that hopefully is going to help you get it sorted. So I will leave it there. And again, links down below to all the stuff that we've talked about. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.